program, Dr. Tania. So I think she deserves a round of applause. Welcome, Dr. Tania, for day two of the mentor development program. The platform is all yours. Please thank you. Go ahead. Thank you so much. It's my honor to be here. Hi, Nada. I see everyone uh, that I know. I thank you so much. I send a greeting to uh, Mr. Samuel Ocardo. I see him as well. I see multiple people on the line. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate the honor of being a part of this wonderful university to be able to be speaking this morning from the United States. Thank you for your patience with me yesterday as I was traveling through many nations. So uh, I am thankful to be here today. Thank you for uh, the CEO and founder, Mr. Uh, Piesh. I appreciate him. He's a good friend of mine. And uh, thank you so much for even starting and launching this worldwide university uh, with these initiatives to actually, we're actually doing it. You know, we, that's the heart of what we're doing is giving free education, quality education to people around the world. So I hear a little interference. If uh, someone can mute their mic, that would be great. And then I'll get started, okay? We're talking about mentorship and uh, the value of that. Um, uh, my lessons today, uh, I'm very interactive as well. So if there's a question, you guys can, you know, just reach out, ask a question, uh, you know, put your hand up or, you know, a signal to someone uh, in the chat box that you want to ask a question. I don't mind that. Whenever I teach, I feel like it's very, inter it needs to be interactive. You need to have, uh, you know, if you have questions, we can do that. Um, my my uh, topic today is entitlements, uh, module three. We're gonna go over leadership, what that means, a uh, brief overview of vision, commitment, uh, team building, uh, the responsibility for you know, team building and, and mentorship in that, in that way. So I suggest you take a pen and paper and uh, we're gonna get started. So our first topic is on leadership. A mentor should be a good leader. We all know that. A leader who not only can show the way, but who knows the way. If you don't know the way as a leader, you're definitely not gonna be able to show the way. So uh, for instance, yesterday, and I like telling quick little stories when I teach. So um, yesterday I was, I was the head of the line uh, and we were walking and, and I you know, got the boarding pass done and I was walking down the hallway and all of a sudden the hallway stopped. Literally there was no exit. Uh, there, well, there was an exit to the right. The door was locked. And uh, I just stood there and I thought to myself, well, the door's locked. There's no way to go through. And I turned to the people behind me and I said, sorry, guys, I know I'm the leader, but right now we're not going to be able to go through. We're going to have to wait a minute. And so I started thinking to myself, you know, what do you do as a leader if you don't know the way? Well, so I turned around and here come, came my friend Carlos, who had helped me uh, earlier that morning with different things. And he said, no, no, no worries. I'm going to help you and we're going we're gonna to get you through. So we opened the door, he unlocked it, and then we were able to walk through. But if you, as a leader, you need to be able to see clearly what other, sometimes you're seeing things that other people can't see. Uh, so you need to know the way and show the way as a leader. Leadership is the ability of an individual or a group of individuals to influence, to be able to guide followers or other members of an organization. Leadership quality is a very important aspect of being a mentor. We all know that. Next is profession, okay? Uh, the mentor should be an expertise in his or her profession. Uh, you should be able to have, you know, um, be a quality uh, experience professional, a profession, we know it as an occupation, a trade, a craft, or activity in which one has a professional experience in. Me, such as in healthcare uh, or in different uh, particular areas, uh, especially one requiring a high level skill or training. The area that I am in is very, very uh, niche. It's very expertise. Uh, I've had to go through tremendous amounts of education and training, uh, spending hundreds and thousands of dollars in what I'm doing. 
but uh, you know, I'm skilled, high level, qualified, skilled at you know saving people's lives, et cetera. And so, uh, what I'm saying to you is, you're getting a high quality education uh, for free. What a tremendous platform this is! So, uh, this is exciting. A mentor should be the master of your subject, of the subject. Uh, he or she should have in depth knowledge. Uh, about the profession and about the subject matter, okay? Uh, never listen to anyone. Uh, this is what I say. Well, let me just say this. A person is normally in three uh, different um, subject categories, uh, I, I feel like, in their life. One, you're either receiving from a mentor. I feel like at all times, you should be receiving from a mentor. You should have a mentor. You should be giving out to a mentee. Okay, so you should have someone that you're teaching, training, equipping, empowering, and you should be also receiving from someone. Uh, you want to travel in circles with people who know more, do more than you, uh, and able to receive from them. That's very, very important to go to the next level in your life. Okay, so you want to surround yourself with people who are very, very um, successful in the area that you want to go into, and you want to. And, and I remember going through the International Mentor, uh, Mentorship Institute uh, for about two years. Um, and I remember being taught that if you don't have anyone around you that you can receive from, you need to actively seek for mentorship. You need to actively seek for someone who can pour into you. Uh, you know, and that's through collaboration, building trust, et cetera. Um, he or she should be able to understand loopholes, okay? A good learner, a good coach, an expert are a few of the qualities of a mentor, a good mentor, okay? Next is subject expertise and resource person. You need to be an expert in your field and an excellent resource person. A resource person is a person with expertise in a certain area who may be called upon as necessary to perform a task or to provide information, okay? A mentor is a trained resource person who is there to answer questions or offer support, okay, to other people. Now, you might not be called to be a mentor to everyone, but you're called to be a mentor to someone. So I, I am right now uh, a mentor for other people, but I also have mentors in my life that I'm receiving from. So as I receive, then I can freely give, okay? All right, next, a vision. A vision is a sense by which the qualities of an object as the color that make up its appearance are perceived through a process in which light rays entering the eye are transformed into signals. We know that that pass to the brain, okay? A mentor should be visionary. So when you are a mentor, Sometimes, and most of the time, you're going to see what other people cannot see. You're going to be able to hear what other people cannot hear at the time. At the time, And as a visionary, don't expect to be understood all the time because you will not be. You will not be understood all the time, okay? But, but keep going. As a visionary, they understand that. They understand that because they see things uh, that other people cannot see. They're driven by that vision, okay? Your, vis your vision should be clear as a visionary. You should have it written down so that other people can see it, they can follow it, and they understand the importance of it, okay? Commitment, let's go on a commitment. A commitment is a promise or agreement to do something, okay? It is a responsibility. Uh, you, commitment is defined as a willingness to give your time and your energy to something that you believe in wholeheartedly or a promise, a firm decision to do something, okay? Commitment leads one to action. Action brings your dreams closer, okay? That's why you have to have an executive action plan every day. You have to press toward your goals every day, okay? We understand that there are short-term, long-term goals, three months, six months, a year, uh, daily goals, daily tasks that you have to set out the night before for the next day. If you don't, you, my recommendation is to give at least one hour toward your vision a day, okay? 
and then you can move that vision forward. Action brings your dreams closer. I want to say that again. A mentor should be committed to his profession or her profession and the vision that is before them. Without commitment, a mentor cannot have depth in anything, cannot bring substance to the table. When mentors are committed to something, especially to the mentees, he, uh, he doesn't accept any excuses, but gives only results. They are very much results driven. So they're pouring in, they're giving in to other people, they're pouring into other people, and they're very much re re um, results driven. Team building, okay? I, you know, I'm committed to this vision this morning, so committed that I am in a, uh, in my car uh, because I had to do multiple things this morning and uh, it's raining, uh, I, and et cetera. But this is important, okay? Because you guys are important. You have to get this because what, if you're not a mentor right now, you will be. If you're a mentee, uh, then, you know, you will be a mentor to someone. Uh, Titles aren't specifically important, but influence is. So if you are in a place, I don't know, a good book for you to read would be 300, The 360 Degree Leader. Uh, that's absolutely a phenomenal book. It's called The 360 Degree Leader. If you haven't read it, you need to read that. Um, so that's just a, a little bit of input there. Team building, let's move on. Team building is the action or process of causing a group of people, teams, especially utilizing activities and events designed to increase motivation and promote cooperation. Team building is a structured practice in the skills team set. Needs to be for, performed optimally uh, within your work environment. Obviously, team building is very, very important for leaders and mentors and mentees. The purpose of any team building is to build a stronger unit of people working together through trust. Team building has many benefits in, any, in every endeavor, okay? It improves productivity. It increases employee motivation. It encourages collaboration and builds trust and respect among each other. Uh, as you work towards one goal and one vision. The mentor, the leader is responsible for team building, okay? The importance of team building, highlight this, the importance of team building. Number one, you're gonna build trust, okay? That's important. Two, you're gonna regulate or help regulate communication. Three, you're going to increase productivity. That's the goal of, you know, team building, increasing productivity. When people like each other, they typically work harder. They typically do better and their output or outcome productivity is, is higher. Four, you're going to bring people together. Five, you're going to foster creativity out of the, out of the box thinking and learning. Five, there's going to be some healthy competition, I'm sure, among your team members. That's not a bad thing. Um, seven, you're going to make people more accepting of each other and one another and each other's faults. We all know that. But you're also going to increase accountability amongst your team members. Eight, you're going to learn how to resolve conflict. They will learn through the team building process how to resolve conflict. Nine, employees can acquire skill sets new skill sets that they didn't have. So this is very, very important. 10, improves company culture. Now, if I'm speaking to any CEOs, entrepreneurs, business builders, you'll want to, to get these skill sets under your belt um, because building a strong team, whether it be academic related, whether it be classroom related, is very, very important to your success of the vision. The importance of team building is all about practice. Now, sometimes it's gonna be successful and sometimes it won't, but we can all learn from good and negative experiences. There's always, you can always learn from anything and anyone, okay? Let me say that again. You can learn in negative situations and you can learn in positive situations, okay? So whatever you're in, you can always learn. Ask yourself one question. 
What am I learning now in this situation? Okay. When a team participates in team building activities, they're really preparing for important real world situations that demand cohesion. Okay. So let me say that again. When you're team building, you're really preparing others for important real world solutions that demand collaboration and cohesion. Next, the benefits of team building activities. All right, let's go into this. The benefits of team building event for work include improving the three C's, okay? The first C is collaboration. We all know that collaboration is super important to get anything done, to get work done, to get household chores done, to get anything done, we need collaboration. The second thing is clear communication. I like to say it like this, direct, clear, concise communication. Um, very, very busy people don't like lengthy communication. They like clear, concise wording. So if you're talking to say your CEO or you know, to whoever it may be, respect their time, understand they don't like lengthy communication because they just don't have time for it. Get to the point, get to it fast and make it clear. The next is companionship. So the three C's are collaboration, communication, and companionship. We need a great team because, you know, we're not created to be alone. We're created to work together. We're created for relationship and life can be very lonely, uh, you know, especially when you're in leadership or you're doing different things. Uh, sometimes, you know, we, we need each other. And we need to collaborate. We need companionship among each other. And um, so that's why we choose to work one another because typically we like each other uh, and we can get great things done. Enhancing these three team competencies then leads to additional benefits, okay? Including better morale, stronger motivation for the team and a unified company structure. Okay. So these things are all very, very important. Now, the next section, you can underline it or however you want to highlight it would be being non-judgmental. As a mentor, you have it. Mentorship is unbiased. Okay. It's unprejudiced. It's prejudice free. It's accepting. Uh, it's neutral, non-aligned, non-discriminatory, anti-discrimination, objective, right? Um, sometimes it's, it's tolerant. It can be very liberal, uh, broad-minded, okay? So you want to make sure you're creating a safe emotional environment for your mentees or when you're, you know, as a mentor, you want to make sure that you're non-judgmental, okay? So make sure that you have that perspective and that mindset, okay? The next, yes, the mentor needs to be non-judgmental. With listening, you need to understand that we have two ears for a purpose, that sometimes the best thing a mentor can do is to be quiet and to listen. Because when you listen, People will tell you where they're at. You need to be able to pick up on the words that people are not saying. Let me say that again. You need to be able to tune in to what people are not saying. So they will tell you where they're at emotionally. They will tell you where they're at mentally. So you need to be able to be a good listener, reflective listening right? Good communication skills, empathy, essential feedback. Feedback without judgment is an empowering thing, right? It's empowering. So both are learned skills. Both enable the mentor to make their own decisions and plans with support and guidance. I'm sorry, the mentee with support and guidance. And both create a communication style that can enhance, enhance any relationship, okay? These things are learned. They're a learned skill set. 
And what you can do is you can utilize them in your everyday life. Go through your, your day. You know, sometimes uh, when you want to speak out, sometimes it's best to just step back and just listen. You know, what is it that you're really saying? Help me understand. Because my goal here is understanding. It's not to get my point across, you know, in communication. So make sure you're doing that. And I think, we're, you know, we're all learning in different ways. We're all learning. So be able to, to tap into that. All right. So this is quite exciting. I'm super excited about uh, today's session. If you guys want to move around for a few minutes, does anyone have any questions? That was part one, entitlements. Does anyone have any questions right now? Just a quick little break. Anyone need uh, some water? Get up, move around. Uh, smile. <laughs> ben. Does anyone have any questions right now? Anybody? If not, we can go ahead and move forward. I'm looking at everyone here on the line. Hello, everybody. I typically like uh, to have your video on. Oh, I see. Okay, there is a question. I see Mr. Samuel Ocardo. Hi, good morning from the US. I think you're in Sweden, correct? Absolutely. Good to see you, Dr. Tanya. Phenomenal session. I just have a question. How do you see yes. all the points you took up on? What do you see is the most important for a mentor to develop himself or herself, except the education? Uh, I think listening, listening is definitely, for me, is very key. Sometimes I do it well, uh, sometimes I don't. Uh, sometimes I am, uh, and I, I know when I do it well, uh, because, you know, uh, I, there's greater understanding from the conversation. I think um, you have to own your, you have to be accountable. But I, I believe that the three C's are very, very important. Collaboration, communication, companionship. But for me, it would be communication is important because listening, if you, if you can't communicate clearly, concisely, directly uh, to the point and don't waste time with people and, and still, you know, bring the empathy. Uh, but if you can't hear and listen, clear, there's a difference between hearing. Like right now, I heard your question. But if you came to me and, and I, I need to listen to you to be able to tune in to exactly what you're saying, why you said it, what you meant when you said it, look at your nonverbals, all of that is in communication. To me, that's important because war treaties, right? We see peace, peace treaties uh, is through communication. War treaties, war has been started through what? Lack of communication or conflict, you know, et cetera. So communication is super important because it, it swings open doors or it can close doors. So we understand that and we, I understand the importance of listening to people. If people don't feel valued in your presence and if they don't feel like they've been listened to, then they're not gonna be able to receive from you. So as a mentor and you're speaking into a mentee's life, uh, if you're not actively listening to them and trying to, and listening very closely, uh, you should be listening more than you're speaking when, when, to a mentee at, at first. and so. You know, it's a, it's a synergistic relationship. It's a give and take relationship. So for me, it's, a, it's about listening to people, uh, listening to their heart, not just listening to their words, tapping into their, to their heart of what they're saying. When you can grasp that, then you can understand how to relate to them on a different level or take them to the next level uh, through the art of communication and listening. Does that help answer your question? Yes, absolutely. Perfect answer. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Is there any more questions? Is there any more questions? If not, I value your time. And so we're going to go on and uh, we're going to move forward here. Okay. So I do want to ask a uh, just a quick question. Um, 
back to Mr. LaCardle. What uh, do you see as an important um, aspect in mentorship? I know that you've mentored, you've done different things. Nada has, I mean, we all, I think everyone here has either been a mentee or a mentor or is both right now. So what do you feel like is an important quality of a good mentor? Um, a mentor pick forward the best in people so they grow in their character, in the leadership, in their life. And, yes. um, so a mentor's role is to be a coach to get them better than him or herself. Correct. Yes. Uh, so in yes. the area where you are specialist in, you take people and getting them better than you. And you can give them advice how to be better. And that is the success of the mentor to take a person from somewhere to even go be before you in the level. That is true mentorship for me. Absolutely. I definitely agree with that. It's about pushing people forward. It's about helping them at being elevated even higher than yourself. That's true empowerment. That's what we're called to do. And that's true leadership. Absolutely. I definitely agree. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate those questions and your feedback. Thank you so much. I value that. So let's move on, take a quick break, deep, deep breathe in, put a smile on our faces and, and uh, let's get back to it. Okay, great. I see people drinking water. Make sure you're staying hydrated so you can function and focus properly. Number four, it, it, module four is skills. Okay, we're going to talk about the mentoring skills model. This is quite exciting. I'm super excited to be able to present this. This is wonderful. So, um, so let's get our pens and papers out and here we go. The mentoring skills model, okay? Shared core skills, we're gonna talk about this. Mentee specific skills would be what? Acquiring mentors, seeking out mentorship, uh, learning quickly, being able to be a quick learner, uh, you know, learning from failure and success. I think that's super important. Showing initiative, step, stepping up to the plate, you know, showing that initiative to learn. Following through is very important. As a mentee, you want to make sure that there's definitely follow through. And, you know, obviously with that, managing the relationship, being sure that you can manage that relationship effectively uh, is important. Okay. Mentor specific skills. Now I'm going to talk about mentor specific skills is being able to instruct. Okay. Instructing uh, is a mentorship of a skill set developing that person like we've just talked about looking at their weaknesses being able to you know um encourage them in their weakness being able to speak into their life successfully encouraging them when they're weak bringing out bringing out their strengths okay because sometimes it's the truth people don't even see their own potential sometimes people don't even understand you know um what they have or their value or their worth they're carrying. But as a mentor, we're able to see what sometimes they can't even see within themselves. So we're able to tap into that potential, that residual, that, that untapped potential and pull it forth, pull it forth into great purpose. That's what we're called to do. Okay. So um, inspiring your mentee, that's super important. Um, walking the walk and talking the talk is very important as a mentor. So you can only impart who you are, okay? Let me say that, you can only impart who you are, okay? So make sure that your character is aligned correctly and that, that because you're, you know, it, you can't talk about integrity if you're not walking in integrity. I mean, that's kind of hypocritical. You can't talk about, you know, uh, order and direction and clarity if your life is a mess, you know, sometimes that I will say this though, that great things can come out of messes and chaos, but you need to make sure you're walking what your, your, your life is aligned with what you're talking about. Okay. That's important because as a mentee, listen, they will be looking at you very closely. They will be watching you. They will be looking at your life. And they will be, they will be tapping in to, you know, what you're doing and, and all of that. So you want to make sure that that's very important. Providing corrective feedback to the mentee is very important. Uh, not uh, constructive criticism 
it, it, you know, is, is important. A mentor is not a yes person all the time. And, uh, you know, we want to do it with love and empathy, of course, but when we see things that aren't right or aren't correct, we need to be able to address it and uh, with, with empathy and love as well, okay? Because that's how people grow uh, around us. Managing risk is another important quality set or a skill set for the mentor. Opening doors. So, you know, for the mentee, being able to open up doors that otherwise they would not be able to walk through. Um, I love doing this. Uh, I, I absolutely love this aspect of mentorship and I am a connect person. I am a person who likes to connect people. And so I, I've done this a lot and I love doing this because, you know, when you are a mentor, you want to people, you want to see people genuinely succeed. And, you know, when I've helped people and they do better than me, hey, that's awesome. Good for them. You know what I mean? But if, if, because you are um, helpful in their success. And to me, that's a, that's a great reward. So I just want to say that. Let's go on. The next step would be core mentoring skills, okay? Both mentors and mentees should utilize the following core skills in their mentoring partnership. So both of them need to be uh, utilizing this. So I will say this, listening activity, listening to one another, is a mentor and mentee skill, okay? Building trust. It, trust is developed on both sides, okay? If the mentee can, can uh, if the mentor is trustworthy and is, uh, you know, showing that, the mentee is going to trust them. If the mentee is following through with what they're required to do, then the mentor is going to trust them. So it goes both ways, right? Uh, encouragement. The mentee encourages the mentor. The mentor encourages the mentee. Identifying goals and current realities. Okay, that's both a mentor-mentee skill set. It's shared. Number one, listening, active, uh, active listening, okay, is a skill set. Active listening. Active listening is the most basic mentoring, uh, mentoring quality skill set that we have. The other skills build on and require it. So in other words, if you don't have good listening skills, guess what? All your other skills are going to go down the toilet. So you have to make sure that you have excellent listening skills. That means you're going to go over the basics, knowing how to ask open-ended questions, knowing how to ask the right questions. If you know how to ask the right questions, you will get the right answers. Believe me, this is a learned skill set. Some people don't like questions. I am a person that asks tons of questions. When I meet a person, when I'm in a relationship with a person, whatever type of relationship that is, I'm going to be asking questions because I am, I am the type of person that's curious. I want to, I want to know, and you have to know how to ask the right questions to get the right answers. Super important. So this is why listening is so important because every other skill set is based on listening. Okay. When you listen well, you demonstrate to your mentors and mentees that their concerns have been heard and have been understood, okay? As a result, they then feel accepted by you, okay? And then what happens when people feel accepted? Well, their trust builds. Their trust builds in you, okay? And in the relationship. The way you indicate your listening intently to someone is by performing several observable behaviors, okay? When you're a mentee and you're actively listening to a mentee, you should, what, reflect, right? Reflect in conversation. So, for example, this is a type of communication. Uh, the mentee says something to you and then you say, let me get this right. You said blank, 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 is this correct? listening okay so reflecting back certain comments to so, to show to the other person you've grasped what they're saying that they're being understood okay and their feelings are being are being understood and listened their message is being received is super important that is 
called reflective listening, okay? Number one. Now in healthcare, we learn this because we're dealing with people all the time. So I've learned this for several years. It's called reflective listening. Two, you're gonna use appropriate nonverbal communication, okay? When you're talking to people, uh, you know, obviously communication is 80% nonverbal, 20% verbal. You're going to watch the tone you use. You're going to make sure you have adequate eye contact. Remember, in some cultures, eye contact is considered hostile. So you want to make sure that you have adequate uh, nonverbal communication, okay? Um, nodding your head, nodding your head when they're talking. That means you're accepting, you're understanding the concept that they're, you know, presenting, leaning toward them, maybe leaning in so that you can show yourself that you're interested in what they're talking about. Um, you want to make sure that your face, I, I'm going to say this, your face when you're talking to someone is not hostile. Although sometimes we might get upset in a conversation, you want to make sure that you're watching your nonverbals, okay? The next thing would be avoid interrupting mentors or mentees while they're talking. This is so annoying in conversation, uh, you know, because what happens is when you're so passionate about a topic or a convert in a conversation, what happens is whether it's conflict, whatever it may be, and we've all been guilty of this, okay? And, and I've been guilty of this even yesterday, but when we're in a passionate conversation, we sometimes are thinking about the next thing to say instead of truly stopping and listening to what the other person is saying. And I know that we've all done this, uh, if we're truly honest, and, but that is something that we need to avoid. So when we're in a heated conversation, whether it be a conflict or whatever it may be, we need to make sure that we're stopping that we're listening with our two ears and we're, tr we're grasping what the other person is saying, taking it in, processing it, and then we can respond to, you know, to what, what the person is saying. So that's very, very important. Remember and show interest in things that they've said in the past. That shows them that you've been truly listening to them summarize you want to make sure to this this is very helpful this is a technique you can use at the end of a conversation you can summarize the key points within that conversation so let me understand what you've said clearly you've said this about business you've said this about how you feel is this correct those are some of the key points that you can do in summarizing the key elements at the end of a conversation now you want to resist the impulse always to turn the conversation to your experiences and your opinions and to find immediate solutions to problems you may be hearing at the moment. Listen carefully first, okay? That's why you need to listen carefully. And then problem solve, you can do later. But first, you need to listen and get what they're saying, okay? If your mentors and mentees have had a habit of immediate problem solving, see if you can help them be better in that and in listening and exploring your problem solving skills. So you wanna make sure that you listen first and then you can problem solve, okay? Two, two, the second, the, the next skill set would be building trust. Now, this is super important, okay? The more that your, your mentors and mentees trust you, the more committed they'll be to your partnerships with them, okay? And the more, the more effective you will be as a leader, okay, or a mentee, this trust develops over time. If your mentors and mentees observe certain appropriate behaviors on your part, you can control the dynamics of this relationship by your behaviors and how you, that's how you can impart trust, okay? To become trustworthy, here, here we go. You must keep confidence. Don't share everyone's business. Make sure that confidentiality is first and foremost. 
whether you're a mentee or a mentor or you know whether you know you're you're mentoring or you're receiving make sure that you keep the, their confidence okay spend appropriate time together you want to make sure you're spending adequate time with one another that you're giving and investing into the relationship follow through on your promises to them if you make a statement yes i will do this you make sure you follow through and you're committed because people are watching what character right it's the same thing across the board if we come with our commitments no matter what the cost if we say yes then we make a way and we do it okay that's results driven admit when you are wrong admit your errors and take responsibility for correcting them whether you're a mentee or a mentee a mentor or a mentee it's important to say you know what i messed that up you know what i did not do that appropriately i apologize i will correct that and don't make excuses no one wants excuses at the end of the day which i know is true they want results um so make sure that if you've done something wrong you take ownership of it accountability and you grow through it okay tactfully share your feedback uh or if you're dissatisfied with something so they'll know you're honest with them make sure that you're you have honest communication okay if we don't have honest communication in our relationships then what is that relationship based on we need to have honest communication and honest feedback now let me say this and i tend to be very direct with people uh people know that about me but i'm loving uh most of the time in that but sometimes i can be very direct and and people tend to take that as being hard when i'm not being hard i'm just saying this is what i see this is what's been done and that needs to be corrected. So I think but I I've received, you know, just be personally, I'm just being very open and vulnerable because that's what mentors do as well is they're not afraid to be open and vulnerable at times. And so you're honest with your mentee about your successes and about your failures, okay? So that we can learn from both, okay? Number 3, encouraging you want to bring encouragement to the table you obviously you know why are you a mentor because you love people you want to see them succeed you want to see them do better you want them to grow you want them to go to the next level you want them to succeed better than you but the most valuable mentoring skill uh is encouraging other people is helping inspire other people this includes giving your mentoring partners recognition You know, I like how you did that. That was so good. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And sincere positive verbal verbal feedback. Now, effective mentors encourage their mentees, which in turn helps increase the mentee's confidence, right? It's it's strengthening their confidence level and enables them to develop, to be stronger, to grow, right? Personally, at the same time, successful mentees make it a point of positively reinforcing their mentors so encouragement goes both ways right mentor mentees which serves to keep the mentors focus and serves to help them be motivated to pour back into the mentee's life provide genuine feedback just wait for a minute uh, dr tania have lost her connection she'll join back in a I minute see. i see i yeah. got not off my network but i it's okay we're going to keep going let's move forward so picking up encouragement is super super important so it goes both ways okay 
So you're going to pour into your mentee. The mentee is going to pour into you. It's a center, what we call a synergistic relationship. Synergistic relationships go both ways. Okay. They go both ways. There's giving and there's receiving on both ends. These are the types of relationships we want, whether it be in business, whether it be our partnerships, whether it be our personal lives. We want synergistic relationships where we're giving and re where we're receiving. No one wants a relationship where they're giving and the other person is taking all the time. That's called exhaustion. It's called mental, physical exhaustion. And that, that type of relationship will wear you down. So you want to be in synergistic relationships in your life. Okay. All right. So let's keep moving. While there are many ways to encourage and mentors and mentees can differ in the types and amounts of encouragement, okay? You can, here's a couple of ways of encouraging the other person, whether you're a mentee or a mentor. Compliment your mentees on accomplishments and their actions. Point out positive traits in addition to their performance and their accomplishments or achievements. Okay, if you see them excelling, then tell them, tell them about it, encourage them, praise them privately, praise them openly one on one and uh, for, for for public recognition as well. You know, it's almost like you're being their cheerleader, you're cheering them on to success. Command, uh, commend them in front of people, which is very, very important, because you are elevating it's a People have a need for this. People have a need to um, feel validated, appreciated, uh, lifted up. And people have an innate need for that. And where they are honored, they will stay. And so recognize that, that when people, and people tend to, when they don't feel that, people will let you know. And so make sure that you're listening, that you're developing and you're growing in your own ways of communication as well as a mentor. So when these situations happen and they come up, and I, I'm going to be honest, this happened to me just fresh yesterday. Uh, you know, th these situations came up to me just yesterday. So when you are in the situation, you need to make sure that you're learning from the situation that you can receive in the situation and you can do a, what, what I like to call a self-evaluation of, well, you know, this is what this person is saying. Am I doing this? I go through a list of questions in my head uh, uh, internally that other people may not do. I go through a list of specific questions and I ask myself, well, these kinds of questions, am I doing this? Am I exhibiting these behaviors? What could I have done differently in this situation? How could it have been better? You know, how could I have made the situation better? These are the types of things that you want to do as a mentor uh, and as a mentee, I believe. Okay, let's go on. Um, you want to, uh, you can express thanks and appreciation. You can write encouraging memos or emails, uh, you know, and encouraging them. Be certain that your praise and encouragement is sincere. So when I say that, um, I do get, I, I'm going to say this on the flip side, I do get a little concerned about people who want continual um, affirmation. I feel because you have to understand, and you have to be the type of person that if you don't get any affirmation from anyone, that it's okay as well. You have to have that inner strength and fortitude to press through that because uh, you have to know who you are. You have to have that inner fortitude and strength to be able to stand alone and on your two feet. And if, if you're doing a great job and no one else around you is seeing that, yes, that can be demoralizing. And yes, that can be discouraging. But you yourself have to have enough inner fortitude to be able to say, you know what, I did a great job and to affirm yourself. If no one else is affirming you, you need to affirm yourself. So to me, that's an important skill set as well. Four, identifying goals and current reality. Mentors should have a personal vision, specific goals, and a good grasp of what a uh, current reality is, okay? So as a mentor, be clear 
on and talk to your mentees about their vision, their dreams. You're tapping into their career and life goals, okay? They'll be interested in your current reality. Well, what's going on in your life? Your view of your strengths, limitations. Now, remember, they're going to want to know your strengths and your weaknesses. You need to present a balanced life view, okay? As well as their current reality of situations within your organization, limitations, as well as a current reality of situations, you know, that are going on uh, within, within their own lives. Mentors should know his or her tentative goals, strengths, de what development needs to happen, and the specific assistance you would like. Okay, that's important. To demonstrate the mentoring skill, listen to these. This is, this is important. Know what's important to you and you know what um, you value and you desire the most. Recognize areas in which you're able to perform well. Very concrete examples of behavior. Of behavior. Excuse me. You can perform at the good to excellent level. So what I'm saying to you is know what you can perform good and know what you can perform excellent in. And that's okay. That's an honest self-evaluation, okay? Know your strengths, know your weaknesses. Any weakness that is not protected, uh, I'm sorry, any strength that is not protected becomes a weakness. So make sure you watch out for those things and give yourself an honest evaluation. Identify specific weaknesses or growth areas observed in yourself and ones noted by others. If you have more than one person telling you this, this, and this, then you might want to take note of that. And you might want to make adjustments and say, well, maybe more than one person is telling me this. Maybe this is something I should adjust in my own life. Set tentative one to five-year goals to reach in your personal life and in your career, okay? This is super important. Why is this important? Because you have somewhere to go. If you don't develop a vision and if you don't develop your goals, guess what? This time next year, you're going to be in the same place doing the same thing that you're doing right now. If you want forward movement in your life, you must write down your goals, write down your vision, and work towards executing that vision every day. Describe accurately the reality of your abilities and your situation. Effective mentors are constantly fine-tuning the self-knowledge, incorporating new feedback and observations regularly. So let me say this. From that conversation I had yesterday, I've already made tweaks in my life today. So I, I, um, you want to make sure that you're making tweaks and you are always, mm, how should I say this, developing in your mindset, your perspective, the way you're doing things, your self-evaluation, what you're looking at. Uh, those things are important towards continually growing professionally as well as personally. Critical skills for mentors, we're gonna go over. All right, does anyone, I'm gonna stop right now. I think maybe we need a break to move around, uh, maybe get some water for a few minutes. Um, are there any questions concerning what we've went over so far? Charles, thank you, Professor, for your feedback. Is there any, um, any questions so far? Victor, I appreciate you being on. Pooja? If you guys can, open up your videos. If you can't, I understand. I'd like to see some faces. Dr. P uh, Pratik, thank you for being on the line. Are there any, oh, hello. Oh, I see uh, Rizalina. 
That's beautiful. Hi, I see you. I, I love to be personal with the people that I'm doing the workshop or whatever it is I'm doing. I love to see your beautiful faces. Hello, I see uh, Carl, I'm sorry, Le Leo, Leoncio, is that right? Yes, Leoncio? that's correct, it's Leoncio. Okay, okay, I got, I got it. Um, are you, and I see Shamin, Shamin, Malaysia, my goodness gracious. Hi, I, oh my goodness, I see another beautiful woman on the line, Ki, Kioma from Nigeria, bless you, good to see you. Hi, beautiful. You're you're all beautiful. My goodness. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions whatsoever? Rosalina, are you enjoying it so far? Are you uh what are, do you have any questions? So far none, very clear and uh okay. Yeah, super. Great, great. So I have a question. Are you a mentor or a mentee or do you do both right now? Uh, so far, I'm a mentor because uh, so far I am teaching. I am teaching elementary yes. and secondary education. Wow, wonderful. Congrats. What country are you in? I'm from the Philippines. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. I want to go there. I hope to go there. I would, that would be amazing. Um, well, congratulations on being a, a, a world-renowned educator. I appreciate you very much. So do you in your life feel like it's valuable to have a mentor in your life? Yeah, I want yeah. to have a mentor. Yeah. Okay, so you're looking for, for a, yes. absolutely, you're, you're looking for a mentor. Yes, so I these, like these you. Care, I like you, Madonna. Oh, well, <laughs> well, let's connect. I would love to connect with you if that's okay with uh, Mr. Piyush, but I'd love to connect with you. Absolutely. You can reach out to me. I'd love to connect with you. Absolutely. Um, but I don't, I want to move on. If there's no questions, you guys, sometimes we need a break. We all are instructors and teachers and educators. We need a break for a few minutes. Uh, Ms. Nada, thank you so much. I value you as my friend. And uh, my dear I, colleague, I am listening you, and really, I'm rela you are relaxing me. Your voice is relaxing <laughs> me. So this about the mentor. Yes, it is great to listen all about the skills, about the leadership. Uh, and first, I said that it is relaxing to listen to you. And I think that nobody. Oh, you know that, I think I, that nobody is tired because you have. Uh, that uh, that uh, color of the voice and all to listen to you. So I think that all agree with me. Oh, Rizalina, Nada, I, uh, I, am, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> I agree. Yes, uh, relaxing uh, almost up to the point of being sleepy. <laughs> uh, no, sleepy. Oh, listen, listen, all, all need to have a camera open so we see each yes. other and nobody can go yes. to sleep. Yes, don't, I, no, no, no. And that's not a good thing if we go to sleep. So, so <laughs> that's why, that's why, <laughs> that's why, <laughs> that's why we, I love to interact with everyone on the platform because everyone has something of value to bring to the table. Everyone has something to give to one another. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, yes, I'm, I'm leading this, but everyone has valuable input. And, uh, you know, so I can learn from everybody on this platform. So I'm just glad to, glad to be here and connect with everybody. And um, so thank you so much for your time. Dr. I Tanya, please so read much. what, doc, yeah. uh, what uh, our Dr. Charles is writing. He will listen oh. you till tomorrow. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Charles. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way. Some of my students in the past may not feel that way, but I, I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, that you, you guys are too kind, too kind. Thank you so much. You're, you're just precious. Thank you so much. All right. So let's get back to it. Um, okay. So mute your mics and here we go again. 
Um, critical skill set for mentors, okay? Instructing, developing uh, our capabilities. Probably all mentors do some teaching or instructing as part of their mentoring. Like Rizalina, you know, she's a mentor. She's a teacher. She's a, a powers people, not a, every uh, everybody on the platform who's teaching, instructing. You know, as parents, if any parents are on the line, we're instructing and teaching our children every day. We're imparting. That's mentorship right there. You can use mentorship in every area of your life. And so in business, mentoring your employees and developing them and tapping into their leadership abilities that they don't even see and pulling that potential forward, you know, increasing their confidence. You can use this in every aspect of your life, which is exciting. This, this seldom means that you'll give formal speeches and lectures sometimes. Uh, instead, your instructing will usually be more informal, you know, at times. You need to seize the teachable moments in your life or in your day every day. You know, seize those teachable moments. Watch for the moments which are teachable, okay? Uh, from modeling, we, we know that as mentors, we can model specific behaviors. So in other words, if I'm requiring something from my employees or other people, guess what? I need to be the leader that does it first. I need to lead by my behavior and that's called modeling. To convey ideas and processes one-to-one -one and in a tutoring mode, okay? So that's number one. A, ment a mentor is... Um, you can be something sort of like a learning broker, okay? Let's just say that. Again, a learning broker. As you assist your mentees in finding resources, I love doing this, finding resources for people, connecting one another, uh, such as people, books, software, websites, um, other informational sources. You can also help them recognize uh, and inspire actions they took in the past ways to excel again. Uh, it's always tempting to all mentees uh, what to do and in fact, to have them follow in your footsteps. So if you want people to follow in your footsteps, you better make sure that your footsteps are uh, correct. You better make sure that what you're doing because we all have the power of influence. Influence is super, super important. That's what true leadership is. And so people will follow your lead. Um, people are following your lead now. Children are following your lead. So the way that you treat them, the way you model your behavior is what they are going to reproduce in their life as well. So that's super important to take in. Your challenge as a mentor is to ensure that your mentees identify and pursue their own form of greatness. Nada is great. She's a great woman. I, I, I see her work. I know her. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman. Now, I don't just say that. I know that. And so when I say that, I say that respectfully, but she is her own person. I can't be Nada. She can't be me. I can't do the things, some of the things Nada is doing. She can't do some of the things I'm doing but I respect her, I love her, I appreciate her. So when we are dealing with mentees, we don't want cookie cutter, uh, I don't want cookie cutter of myself. I want to tap into their greatness and to be able for them to recognize their own greatness and pull it out. That's what, that's, that's what I wanna do as a mentor, okay? So you need to meet people where they're at and recognize that they are unique in and of themselves. So you want to inspire people as well. The other topic is inspire, our ins, uh, inspiration, okay? One skill that separates superb mentors from very good ones, and you are all superb mentors, superb, excellent, top of the line, okay? is the ability to inspire their mentees, not just to average, but to greatness. You want to inspire them 
to be the very best version of who they are called to be. By setting an example in your own life of yourself and helping your mentees experience other inspirational people, situations, you can help them to future to the, the best path for their future that excites and motivates even beyond their original dreams. Sometimes mentees have a dream that is, um, how should I put it, that is here, but they're really called to walk here, okay? So Kioma, you might have a dream and you may present that dream to me and we'll, we'll work on it. We'll, we, you know, we'll carve out goals and those types of things. But then my job is to take you even further and higher uh, than you've ever been before. And that is to take you towards your greatness. And, uh, and that's, that's a discovery process for sure. Okay. All right. Let's go on. All right. So we're traveling towards greatness. This is what we do as mentors, taking the mentees to that skill set. Okay. Here we go. We'll keep going. All right. Well noted with thanks. Absolutely. Definitely. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Let me just, here we go. Encourage you. Okay. All right. So, so we've already talked about uh, inspiring. Mentors can, okay, inspire actions yourself, which challenge your mentees to improve, okay? Help them observe others who are inspiring, okay? Create new opportunities for them. Arrange other inspirational experiences for them. Challenge them to rise above the mundane, the everyday to day activities and do important things in their life. Providing corrective feedback is another um, skill that we need to do as mentors. In addition to giving frequent, listen to this, and sincere positive feedback, effective mentors should also be willing and able to give mentees corrective feedback um, and hold people accountable, okay? When you observe your mentees making mistakes, performing in less than desirable ways, you should be direct with your mentees. And that's okay. It's okay to say, you know what? Things are not okay. It, that's okay. It's okay to question. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to point things out that, you know what? This is not 100%. Let's get it to 100%. And how can we do that? Letting them know what you perceive, what you sense, what you're feeling. Provide some better ways for handling the situation. You might, might make um, recommendations, suggestions for a better way of doing it. It will probably be, you, but when I say that, I want to also point out this. You want to make sure that you lead your mentees to critically think through the situation themselves. I am not a mentor who gives solutions to every problem very quickly. I like to help that person be able to critically think through the situation themselves. This to me is very, very valuable in the mentoring process. And what that, and I think that probably comes from my healthcare background because every person has been given a, a brain and we can think and critically think through situations ourselves. Now, critically thinking is a skill set in and of itself, but you can help people to do that. For me, that's another time, another moment, and another workshop. So I'm not going to go into that specifically, but you can look up critically thinking skills and you can help people do that themselves. Okay. All right. Let's move on. All right. So we're talking about providing a critical feedback. A mentor should attempt to, here we go. Use positive, non-derogatory, business-like words and tone of voice with mentees when their behaviors or maybe their actions or products are, are a little unsatisfactory or not satisfactory. Give corrective feedback in private. You don't want to do that in public because that would obviously create an embarrassing situation for them 
and a humiliating experience. It, it, that's no good for anyone. So take them and be professional and give one-on-one -on -one feedback. Give the feedback as soon as possible after the performance has happened. That's important. Teach your mentees, excuse me, teach your mentees new knowledge, uh, skills, attitudes by explaining, giving effective examples, and asking thought-provoking questions. Open-ended questions, not yes or no questions. Um, um, you know, uh, tell me how you feel about this. That's an open-ended question. Instead of, um, do you agree with this? Yes or no? So that's a yes or no question. So you have to know, uh, obviously, how to do that. Help your mentees gain broader perspectives of their organization, including history, values, culture, politics. If you can create new experiences for people, do it. You know, do it. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Demonstrate our model of effective behaviors, pointing out what you're trying to do. Help them monitor performance and refocus them. You know, uh, give them the steps that are needed to refocus. A key part of your instruction is teaching and the mentoring process. You can do this by making process comments, um, pointing out, of course, naming otherwise, uh, getting your mentees to recognize which aspect of mentoring you're doing at the same time and why, why you're doing that. I'm the type of person that I need to know the rationale. I need to know the rationale of why am I doing this? What's happening? Where we're we going with this? What's the focus? Number four, managing risk, being able to manage risk. Another distinguishing characteristic of effective mentors is their willingness and ability to protect their mentees from disaster. Okay, that's super important. One of the tasks is to prevent mentees from making unnecessary mistakes as they learn to take appropriate risks. This skill of managing risk builds closely on this core skill set, skill set of building trust. Okay, as we identified earlier. Mentors will. Now we are about to, um, let me see here. We are about to end the session, but mentors will help mentees recognize the risk involved in action and projects. So you want to make sure you're pointing out the positives as well as the risks. Make suggestions to help avoid major mistakes in judgment or action, okay? Help them learn to prepare, to prepare well, okay? Success is in the preparation. Make sure you're helping people prepare well. Get wise counsel. You wanna make sure that you are surrounded by wise people because there is great, great um, success with wise counsel. And trust their own decisions and actions. You need to help them to be able to trust their own voice and their own, initi uh, their own initiative, right? You wanna make sure because what happens, and I just ran into a young woman last night in the airport she was 25. She's going through a lot of different things. And I looked at her and I said, I think you already know the answer. The answer's already in you. She said, yes. And I said, but you need to learn how to trust your own voice. And we've all been there. And I think that's a learning and a growing process that we, we, we all go through. That, you know, we have other people telling us different things, but we have to learn how to trust our own voice. And there's great authority and power in your voice, okay? And you need to know how to use your voice effectively, okay? All right, so if requested in difficult situations, intervene as your mentee's advocate with others. You wanna make sure you're doing that. Opening doors, we've talked about. Mentors are usually in a position to provide visibility for their mentees. This means opening the right doors that allow them to meet the right people and demonstrate to different audiences what they can do. So you can say that uh, Dr. Prayish, he is a good friend of mine, but he's also someone that opens doors for many people. And he is an amazing man. So we want to give honor where honors due. 
Research has shown that when mentors vouch for mentees in the ways mentioned, their work is much more likely to be well-received, whatever that they're doing. Mentors should, okay? Here's a couple of key points. I'm gonna summarize this. Put in a good word to people who could help your mentee reach their desired goals, okay? You wanna make sure that you're helping, you're helping them. Personally introduce your mentees to appropriate contacts. Make certain your mentee's abilities are noticed by others and you're encouraging them. Give your mentees assignments, opportunities that enable them to interact with important colleagues, suppliers, customers, organizations, or high profile networking. Okay, you wanna make sure you're giving them those opportunities. You're prepping them, you're preparing them for success. Suggest other resources for your mentees to pursue as well. So you wanna make sure they're always broadening their horizons, so to speak. Okay. And I believe I am done for this session. This was a great, wonderful session, great experience. Is there anyone that thank you all for listening? Thank you for being attentive, engaged, uh, and participatory. I appreciate that so much. Is there any questions at this point? Because I value your time. I know that we all have other things to do as well, uh, critical things through the day and evening. So I, I don't want to go on and on. So is there anything that, that uh, any key points, questions, observations, feedback that you may have you wanna, you wanna say? Uh, actually, the feedback I have, Dr. Tanya, as if that the sky is the limit. There's no sky uh, for us to, uh, to reach. So, so, so it's how far we would like to be. So, so, so there's nothing to fear, actually. If we have a mentor that really guides us to success. So, so what you, you're saying that when we try to motivate, uh, motivate others, well, we can only motivate others if we're only motivated within us. But we can only that, share. Yes, sorry, sorry. About that's that. it. No, 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 that's okay. That's okay. That's exactly right. Um, so you can only take people as far as you are. You can only take people as far as you are. And what I mean by that is, you know, you can only impart who you are. You're welcome, Kioma. You're welcome. But I want to challenge you guys today. A mentor is one who can challenge people. And I want to challenge you guys today that you all have a level of high success. Thank you, Samuel. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. You, you all have a high level of success already. Now, here's my challenge. I want to take you to a new level right now. Thank you, Nada. I appreciate you as well. You're amazing. Thank you so much, my dear friend. I appreciate you. <laughs> um, here Do is my Dr. challenge. Tanya, Dr. Tanya, please uh, call the people to join uh, your uh, your group for the motivation, for the inspiration, for... Oh, I didn't even think about that, but yes, I will. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. So we do a lot of live workshops. We do, I, I don't want to take away from this platform in any way, um, but I, I will let you know what my platform is I, I'm involved in. And actually, I believe Dr. Piesh is involved as well, but um, it's called Dr. Tanya Simmons, the Strategic Visionary. It's on Facebook. Just send a request and I'll let, we'll let you in. Um, but we give live workshops and, and things like that, motivational speeches, talk, encouragement, it's for high level executives, business owners, uh, people starting in business, uh, anything like that. Thank you so much, Nadia. I appreciate that. It's Dr. Tanya Simmons at um, please share a link, Dr. Tanya. I, uh, you can go on Facebook. I don't know if Nadia could share it or not. I, I can't do it right now. I'm sorry, but it's Dr. Tanya Simmons, the strategic visionary. You'll see it. Uh, it'll pop up. Okay. All right. And it's on Facebook. So, um, but I, my challenge to you all today is, uh, um, is this, you've all reached a level of success. I mean, I, I know that already, of course, in your careers, personal life, et cetera. 
But I want to put out a challenge today. If you don't have a mentor who, and I'm talking about financially as well, okay, who think about, because my goals may not be where your goals is, I don't know, but think about where you want to be in one year. Think about where you want to be professionally in your career and personally in one year. Now I want to encourage you to find that person who is already doing and being successful in where you see yourself in one year and connect with that person. And I want you to open up your your thinking and the people you don't think you can connect with are the people that you will connect with. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I want you to think bigger. I want you to think um, higher and I want you to think wider. So open up your thinking, not a, the, the people that you are, are within contact with now. I pray that you're not here. At, I, I mean, you are here. Hear what I'm saying. I pray that your circle gets bigger, wider, and deeper this time next year so that the things that you dreamt about will occur in your life. Uh, and, and you'll, it, so you need that, that, those high-level mentors in your life. I need those high-level mentors in my life. But the right people for the right purpose and the right to, to take you to that place where you see yourself in one year and don't look at the lack of money don't look at the lack of resources don't look at the lack of connection I want you to look at and this is the law of attraction in work here I want you to look at thank you Kiyoma yes I will I will definitely I will accept it absolutely I want you to think about success I want you to think about greater success, what that means to you personally. I want you to think about a high level. I want you to think about finances too, because we can't do anything without finances. It's not wrong to have money. It's wrong to love money. So money is a tool. We need money. Think about uh, new financial connections, financial wealth, growing your financial wealth, independence, uh, you know, those types of, of, of thinking and larger thinking so that this time next year, you won't be in the same place you're in now, but you'll be operating not from here, but you'll be operating from here and a new higher dimension and levels of your greater purpose and where you are called to be. So that is my challenge to you today. So if you don't have a mentor, look for someone that can help you get to that place where you see yourself in one year, okay? And, and so I'm always open for availability to talk in any way, but uh, that wasn't my main purpose for being here. My main purpose is to support this platform with honor and to pour into your lives. And hopefully I've done that and you've received some some great information that you'll apply to your life and you'll go to the next level for your life and for your mentees as well and the people around you that you affect because you, the teachers, there's nothing more important um, because they're raising the next generation of leaders. So uh, wonderful. I, I am done. It's 10.06. I want to respect everyone's time. You guys have a wonderful day and uh, take care. Okay. Thank you so much. Dr. Tanya, you are amazing. I just want oh. you to keep on uh, talking, talking, like uh, you are speaking from last one and a half hour. It was such an enriching session, informative session. Thank you so much for your valuable time. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And uh, Absolutely. No, it, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Right? And I uh, thank each uh, of the trainees for being here, for being the wonderful mentees. And I think I am very much sure each one of us know by now what the mentee is in details. Yes? 
absolutely oh, yes absolutely. that's great <laughs> now last but not least dear piyush sir the words are not sufficient to express my gratitude towards you sir you are really a true source of inspiration for each one of us thank you for being a strong support for guiding us in the right direction and to be our mentor so yes. everyone thank you so much once again stay tuned stay connected see you all tomorrow to more to know more about the mentor at 5:30 pm till then be safe take care bye thank you bye bye thank you so much bye 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 thank you thank you, thank you.